How to add Blazor identity for authorization to an existing Blazor app. We'll scaffold a quick Blazor app with CRUD pages and then add identity and block pages from unauthorized users. We'll start by creating a Blazor web app project. Then select the .NET 8 framework, and for the interactive render mode, we selected server and per page. First, we'll need a model to create some CRUD pages, so we add a models folder and add a simple class for a movie model. We'll give it an ID and title, and maybe a genre property. We can set the title property to required and just add the using for the data annotations. To scaffold the CRUD pages for the movies, go to Components and right-click on Pages. Select Add, then New Scaffolded Item. Under the Razor component, select Razor component using Entity Framework. In the pop-up dialog, select the movie model, and we can add a data context to our project, and maybe simplify the name a bit. We'll be using the lightweight SQL Express server that comes with Visual Studio. Once scaffolded, there's a new Movie Pages folder in your pages with all the CRUD pages for your movie model. Of course, we'll also need to go create the database with a Movies table. Double-click Connected Services, and from the Servers menu, select Add Migration. We'll call this First Migration Initial. Once that is created, we can go update the database with the new migration instructions. Before we test this, let's add a menu link to the movies in our nav menu page. We'll just copy an existing menu item and modify it. The Movies menu takes us to a list of movies where we can add a movie. We'll add another movie. We can also edit a movie. See its details page and delete it. With our basic Blazor app scaffolded, we can now add user identity to our project so users can register and log in. We can also block pages from unauthorized users. Right click on the project name and select Add New Scaffolded Item. From the Identity section, select Blazor Identity. In the pop-up dialog, we'll add a new data context that uses Blazor Identity. We'll use this new context to change our existing data context. We'll add a user class where we could in future add additional properties we may want to store for the user.
In the data folder, note that the new data context inherits from identity DB context. Go back to the old data context and copy the DB set into the new identity context class. Now we can delete the old data context class and rename it to the old data context name. This is just to set up our data context to inherit from identity DB context. Before updating the database, you should build your project again. Then, double-click Connected Services and select Add Migration from the Server's menu. We'll call our migration something like Add Identity. After the migration file is created, we update the database. In the nav menu, you'll see login items were already added to the menu. These pages were added to the account pages folder when we scaffolded the Blazor identity. Let's test the changes. We can still access the movies page, but we'll change that in a moment. First, we'll register a new user. We'll add an email address and a strong password. You can add email services to confirm a user's email, but for development purposes, you can just click the Confirm Account link. To block the Movies pages from unauthorized users, we'll add an Imports file to the Movies folder. Click on the Movies folder and press Ctrl Shift and A to quickly add a new file. Name the file underscore imports with an uppercase I and dot razor. Remove everything from the file and add an authorize attribute. Use the control period to add the required using. This import file acts for all the pages in the movies folder and we've just set an attribute that all the movie pages require an authorized user. Now, when we try to go to movies on the menu, it will automatically jump to the login page, and we need to log in with our registered user. Once logged in, it will allow us into the movies page. Notice how the menu items changed after logging in. We can now manage our user profile, and there's a logout menu item. Once we log out, we won't have access to the movies page, and we'll have to log in again. In this demonstration, we created our database in the lightweight SQL Express server that comes with Visual Studio. To view the database, go to View and select SQL Server Object Explorer. Then, go to the database and select Tables. Here are all the user identity tables as well as our movie table. To see the data, right-click the movie table and select View Data.
Thank you for watching our video. For more tutorials on C Sharp, hit subscribe and click the reminder. Give us a like so the video can be visible to more people.